Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before. 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they had heard this, they were cut to the heart, and they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off, whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, 
This is a grace before God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, you returned, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross, so that, freed from sin, we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. God. Jesus said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheep, enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice. As the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out, when he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him, because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him, because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used to use this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize that he was trying what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved, and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we're celebrating Good Shepherd Sunday, and as the shepherd of this non-existent flock here. It, it's very weird to celebrate Good Shepherd when the shepherd stands before a camera. But it is part of the Easter tradition that we have kind of this lineup of Sundays that come every year to remind us of belonging. It's very important that we have a sense of belonging. And in order to belong, we need good leaders. So we have to pray for them. And this is kind of a lot of what I would like you to reflect on this Sunday. You know, when they talk about sheep in the biblical times, they didn't have wire stretchers. Strange thing around here, because I'm sure all of you probably have a set of wire stretchers. But they didn't have wire stretchers back then. There were no such things as fences made of wire. The fences were rock. They were just piles of stone that they would line up 
In fact, there are parts of Kansas to, to, to this day where you can still see rock fences or piece parts of them. And so the shepherds would build these pens and they might have other shepherds join them where they put all their sheep in there at night. And there's only one entrance to that penned in area of rocks. And that would be where the shepherds would sleep. And that way they're protected from predators who might try to get in. And they also are there to prevent the wandering sheep from wandering off in the middle of the night. And then during the day, when it was time to go out to seek pasture, to seek fresh drinking water, the shepherd would call out to his sheep. Now, I don't know exactly what that would have sounded like, but I know when I was a kid, my dad had these really weird calls or to get his horses to come in or to get his cattle to come in, and they would always listen to him. In fact, at one time, he tried using the horn of his truck. It worked great. They learned, but then he got a different truck, and they didn't recognize the sound of the horn. And so we had to kind of start all over, and he, he, said, he gave up on that and said, forget it, I'm going back to just calling out to them with his own call. And so I, I think most people who grow up on a farm know that there's a certain call for the farm animals, whether it's the dog or whether it's your sheep or whether it's your cattle or your horses. And this is what would happen. The shepherd would leave the, that pendant area and he would start calling. And those sheep who knew that voice would follow. And so he wouldn't get sheep from other herds because they would be following the voice of their shepherd. And so today, this is the image that the gospel is conveying to us, this image of following this voice that is familiar. So if it's going to be familiar, if we're going to hear the voice of God, we have to be men and women of prayer. We have to be steeped in a life of prayer so that when the voice is given, we hear it, so that we know how to answer. You know, parents are also shepherds. In fact, they're more of a shepherd than I am because they provide for the children of our community day in and day out. Children are very reliant upon their parents, especially when they're little. It's very obvious. When they're teenagers, they pretend like they're not reliant, but they really are. Just don't tell them. And parents are there to protect their kids. They're there to protect them from the evils of the world and hopefully maybe even protect them from making too many disastrous decisions of their own. But there are other people in our society who operate in shepherd-like roles, but they're not shepherds. They might be assistants to the shepherding, like law enforcement. The poor guy who gave me my speeding ticket a couple months ago. Yeah. He was acting as a shepherd to get me in line. Our teachers act as shepherds to guide us and teach us and so that we become wise. Dare I say, even our legislators who form laws are, should act in ways that are in accord with good shepherding. Although I would not call these people law enforcement teachers and legislators, I would not refer to them as shepherds in and of themselves. Why? Because for them, that is something that's part of their life, but not the entirety of their life. The most unique shepherds that we have, and the ones that the gospel really draws us to, are family. Parents in particular. And then also to the priests, to the bishop. You know, I've been saying to you for a couple weeks that our main obligation is obedience to the bishop. And for those of you who have struggled mightily with that, I say... Welcome to my set of vows, because obedience is the preeminent mark of the diocesan priesthood. We have to follow the guy with the funny hat and do what he tells us, even if we really don't want to. But we become better people when we follow the voice of the shepherd, and he has been given to us as our shepherd. You know, it's also important to pray for those who will be called to these roles of shepherding as parents or as priests. And I remember even at the beginning, 20 years ago when I was first ordained, I remember we would pray frequently 
for an outpouring of good holy vocations to the priesthood. We wanted to foster vocations within the parishes, but you never heard a general petition praying for people to embrace the sacrament of marriage. We would pray for Johnny and Susie, who are preparing for marriage here this summer. You know, we would pray for people by name who are already in the process, but we didn't pray for people to discern and to choose marriage. Oh, how things have changed in 20 years. Because now so many young people go off to the courthouse, they go off to a place of convenience or a, a wedding of destination, or they just don't bother to marry at all. But we offer the sacrament of marriage. And that is what initiates you fully into this life of being shepherds for your children. And so we need to urge young people to not just get married, but to truly discern the sacrament the call to marriage. We also have to pray for our bishop. You know, in this time, it's a very difficult time. We have Zoom, Zoom meetings with him every week, and I always notice within the first three minutes of the meeting how nervous he is. He's got a lot on his shoulders in guiding the, the diocese in the time of this pandemic. And believe me, he's got a lot of pressure on him from various directions about what to do. So we listen for his voice. We listen for his direction on what to do next. I'll tell you, I'm super excited right now because the governor has, starting Monday, the governor has put into place this four-step plan for getting us back to functioning. That means mass is coming soon. That means eventually Mass will return to some sense of normalcy as well. And so we need to pray for the bishop as he guides us in that. He will set that direction for us because he's our shepherd. And so we, we will listen for his voice. Pray too also for the seminarians of the diocese. Many of you know I work pretty much every day with our seminarians at the House of Formation in Wichita. But we also have many men preparing here just in a few weeks to be ordained to the diaconate and to the priesthood. If you look at the diocesan paper, you see a picture of the, that uh, class of five or six that's getting ordained at the front of the page, on the front page. Pray for these men because they will be your future shepherds. You see this hair? It's gray. And if, I'll tell you what, there is one thing that is most coveted on the black market right now. It's a barber. They can make big coin right now if they know how to market themselves quietly for fear of law enforcement. However, you look at my hair and you see it's getting really gray. So there will come another priest, younger, better preacher, better shepherd, better everything, hopefully, than I am, that will come someday down the road. Now, it's we still got 20 years, just relax. But someday there will come another priest. Why not pray for him already? Why not pray that he will bring another conversion of heart to you and to our community? Why not pray for the grace of those young men and women in our parish that would be sitting in our pews who will become parents in a matter of a few years? Pray for them, that they might hear the voice of the shepherd, the shepherd Jesus Christ, who calls me to the priesthood, who might call you to marriage and family life, but who is still calling, even while we're stuck at home, the Holy Spirit is still calling the young men and women of your families. Ask yourself if you are open to supporting your son becoming a priest your daughter becoming a religious sister, your children embracing the sacramental life of marriage. If you can, without reservation, say yes, you are probably well on your way to also be a good shepherd.
Together, let us make our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Together with one voice, we place our trust in a loving God as we offer him our prayers. We pray for Pope Francis. May God bless him with continued health, vitality, and wisdom in his ministry. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For civic leaders, may Jesus' example of servant leadership assist them in their efforts in solving the most difficult challenges of their communities, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who harbor resentment or ill will toward others, may the Holy Spirit bring them consolation and lead them in reconciliation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, May God help us grow in being emissaries of comfort and peace to all those we encounter. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way for all those who suffer from the coronavirus. We pray for those who care for them and those who work to keep us all safe in our communities. For each of them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And we pray for all members of the parish of St. John the Evangelist here in Clonmel, for this Mass is offered for each of your intentions. For you, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for our beloved dead, may they be welcomed safely home this day. We ask that we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, your Son, our Good Shepherd, bids us to follow his voice. Hear the prayers we offer this day, for we make them in faith, through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. <clears throat> Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice 
and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave it, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. John the Evangelist, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Carl our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. <coughs> Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, the glory of God is yours forever and At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. good shepherd has risen, who laid down his life for his sheep, and willingly died for his flock. Alleluia. Please join me in making the prayer of spiritual communion. <clears throat> My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you are pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I do want to let you all know, I have an announcement, <clears throat> I will not be at the parish this coming week, so Monday through Friday. Um, I haven't been away since back in August, and so I'm going to take a, a week. To, I need to get a little retreat time in away from the parish, so I'm going to be away. So um, Cassie's in charge while I'm gone, Cassie and Madeline, but the offices will be open, so you can come in to see them, um, try to maintain some safe distance, wear your mask. It's being encouraged to wear masks, so if you would like to do that, you're welcome to do that as well. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who wander throughout the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.